Here we go for video number four in our series of installments on the seven alignment targets of optimal vinyl playback. Now, as a quick recap, remember there is one linear dimension, two forces, and four angles in the seven alignment parameters. We've already covered overhang and VTF, and we've covered horizontal forces, torque forces, and static friction of the tone arm, and we just covered azimuth. Now let's talk about zenith error. There is a lot of confusion about what zenith error is, and unfortunately I'm seeing in the press and on forums that people are referring to offset angle as zenith. It's not. Offset angle is the angle of the cantilever relative to the arm wand or the effective length line, and it's usually somewhere between uh, 18 and 26 degrees, depending on arm length. When we align our cantilever for the optimal offset angle, what we're aligning is a proxy for what really matters. Because we can't see what really matters. What really matters are the two contact edges of our fine line contact stylus. We are aligning the cantilever under the faith that if you draw a line between these two contact edges, that that line is perpendicular to the cantilever on a horizontal plane. Unfortunately, of the uh, three manufacturers of stylus cantilever assemblies, I've been able to get information on two of them. They have a tolerance of plus minus five degrees. So we operate under the faith that this line that goes between the two contact edges is perpendicular to the cantilever. How well placed is that faith? Well, we've analyzed hundreds of cartridges in our laboratory and we can say that it's not well placed at all. The average zenith error that we see in the lab is slightly over two and a half degrees. That is definitely audible. But we have seen as much as 17 and a half degrees off and it doesn't matter how much you've paid for the cartridge. We see no correlation between tight tolerances and price you've paid for the cartridge. Let's now start to define the term. Zenith error is a uh, reference to the perspective you need to have in order to see the error. The definition of zenith is a point directly above the observer. In order to see the stylus contact edge, the left and the right channel parts of the stylus contact edges, and their relationship to the cantilever, we need to look at the stylus from its zenith. We need to have that stylus pointing directly into the camera, pointing right into the camera lens on our microscope. By the way, illuminating that edge is incredibly difficult. Once we have that perspective from the zenith, we can see what the error is between that contact line and the cantilever. 90 degrees is what the stylus cantilever assembly manufacturers are aiming for. Any deviation from this 90 degrees is called zenith error. While you can't fix zenith error unless you physically remove the stylus from the cantilever and reorient it properly, which I don't recommend. Once zenith error has been measured, the way to compensate for it is to simply correct for the error by purposefully misaligning the cantilever. The Wally Zenith has a series of cantilever alignment marks which are purposefully not perpendicular to the radial line. They are one and a half degrees, two and a half degrees, three degrees, off of perpendicularity. So we purposefully choose the select line on the Wally Zenith and correct for that error so that we can get the left and right contact edges of the stylus into proper orientation with the record. It's not terribly important the angle of the cantilever itself. What's most important is that the left and right channels read the groove simultaneously, not with one being ahead in time and phase than the other. Please watch the video we've already done on zenith error so you can learn a little bit more about this phenomenon and the mechanical distortions that it throws off when it exists. On the cutting side, that is at the lathe, we know what the cutting engineers, again, are aiming for. When they align that cutting, cutting stylus into the chuck of the, of the cutter head, they want that cutting face of the cutting stylus to be perfectly collinear with the radial line of the lacquer 
They do not want it to be offset from it, nor to be diagonal to it. The degree to which they are successful with this effort clearly varies from cut to cut, from engineer to engineer, lathe to lathe. But we know what they're aiming for, and like all things that we do here at WAM Engineering, we are aiming for the mean. We are aiming for a mechanical position that puts us in the greatest statistical likelihood to get the most out of all records. And that aim is, of course, to have the left contact edge and the right contact edge of your playback stylus be perfectly collinear with the radial line of the record. On a pivoted tone arm, this can happen twice across the record surface at the null points, of course. Here's an image of a test record into which has been cut a square wave. Square waves are really handy for cutting zenith error measurement because they form a nice sharp elbow when the stylus changes direction. You'll notice at the bottom of the frame that there is a, the radial line of the lacquer has been identified. But when you draw a line between the two elbows, the inside elbow and the right and the outside elbow of the cut, you'll notice that the left channel and the right channel cutting edges of the cutting stylus are not perfectly parallel with the radial line of the record. They're off by some three and a half degrees. As I've mentioned before in the video previous to this one on azimuth angle, this type of error at the time of cutting is not, as I see it, a reason to be pessimistic. It's a reason to be optimistic. Because if we can give the tools to the cutting engineers to improve their accuracy as well as we can do on the playback side, then that just creases the possibility of getting more accurately cut records to which our very accurately set up playback cartridges are ready to engage and lift up every last bit of information from those grooves. And remember, just as with cutting errors on the azimuth angle, or with asymmetrical cutting styluses. The error is equally likely to go in the clockwise direction versus the counterclockwise direction. So we aim for the mean on the playback side and put ourselves in the best position, statistically speaking, to get the most out of all records. When we are aligning our cartridge and revolving it on the head shell, we aren't adjusting our zenith. There is no adjusting zenith. That's not a thing we can, again, correct for Zenith error. And we do that with a tool like, for example, the Wally Zenith. Speaking of the Wally Zenith tool, we've now written instructions for people to use that tool to listen for Zenith error for correction. A number of people who have followed the instructions that come with the Wally Zenith have now reported back to me that they claim they can hear differences as little as a half a degree of zenith error during their process. I find this very optimistic and I encourage you to try it out. So if you want to see what the process looks like, just go to the Wally Zenith page and download the instructions. Take a read for yourself. But just know that it really needs to be done after all of the other parameters have been dialed in. It will be much more difficult for you to perceive small differences in stylus position in the groove if you haven't already optimized the other parameters. VTF, overhang, horizontal torque forces including anti-skating, SRA, VTA, and azimuth. Get those dialed in first, then when you're all done, then you can go about this process of listening for zenith error correction. The Wally Zenith performs an important function to be able to track your changes and repeat them without a fiducial like the Wally Zenith. One little shake of the, of the wrist and you'll wonder, how far did I go? And how do I get back to where I was? Because that was pretty good. The Wally Zenith allows you to have a tracking and traceability, repeatability process. Please be sure to watch the video on Stylus Zenith Error. It explains more about what it is and what are the mechanical distortions that it throws off. Two more videos following this one will complete our series on the seven alignment targets of optimized vinyl playback. That is coming Stylus Rake Angle, SRA, 
and vertical tracking angle, VTA, two very different things that are often confused for each other. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and be sure to enjoy Analog Forever.